have Dex with us and he's gonna help me to share with you top six professional tips uh, prior arrival to Canada. Let's begin. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to share a professional tip with our audience? Do you want to? No. Okay. It's only me today. Let's do not waste any time more. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel if you like my content. And let's hit the first bullet of the topic. Let's say you are in the same position like us. We are waiting for a magic email which will tell us to go to the nearest uh, visa center to submit our passport. However, what we can do now while we have these six months, maximum six months of time in order to think and prepare for our departure. First of all, of course, when you think about a new place, you'll think about the location, which is very obvious. Think about the location you think specifically about the town where you're gonna be. If you're gonna talk about the PNP program, which is in our case is in New Brunswick, as I mentioned in my previous videos, we don't really have much choice, right? It's not an express entry when we can choose the province where we will go and we will be super flexible. We have more opportunities. For us, we already know which province is that. If you are in express entry, you can first glance at the all the provinces in terms of the location. By saying the location, majority of them and most of them, and I would say the main thing is a job. That's where you're gonna work, you is going to live. Same to happen to us, right? So if we have a job in Abu Dhabi and we live in Dubai, it's very difficult to commit every day two hours, two hours and plus of the driving. So you need to choose the location which is somehow close to your job. So we slowly lead to the job topic. So you have to think when you're thinking about new place to live, about the job you're gonna have. What we have to do here, we have to have a look clearly on our occupation. So think about who you are are you in marketing? Uh, are you in defense industry? Are you in hospitality industry? Or probably you are in healthcare industry. You have to look for the province or for to be specific town or city where the jobs in your industry in demand. Probably to look at the job bank analytics, it can be one of the options in your case. A part of job analysis, you can look at the salary ranges, which is also are available in the internet. Check the cost of living in that specific city or town. Check the travel time, as I mentioned to you, how long it will take for you to come uh, from potential work yeah, uh, to your home. So in this way, planning your home, planning the place you will stay, it will be more clear. Also, what you need to consider, which is very important, which pace are you prefer? Would you like something dynamic and fast pace, or you prefer to be in the countryside, uh, more calm place uh, around the nature? So that will also will dictate you uh, the place where you're gonna stay. The second one is look at demand job. For example, you don't want to be uh, anymore a marketeer. So you look which jobs are in demand. Check the statistics, employment rates. You can go and Google a labor force survey where you can find all the information uh, you required. But basically, you have to understand the market of the place you're going to. Number three, can I deny your <laughs> resume? Well, about that, I got to know many, let's say many years ago, it's like a few years for sure. My friend who's living in Canada already informed me that the standards are different because th that time she was looking for a job in Canada. You have to redo your CV completely. The things such as matter in the country where you're staying, for example, UE, it's crucial here to have a photo. I applied for a job recently and they required my photo. 
the thing is i removed my photo from the cv i think around two years ago so i decided that it's i will not say it's discrimination but i wanted people to choose me because of my knowledge and my skills and experience not uh, looking at the photo and decide if i'm pretty enough to take the position he asked for a photo and my answer was very professional I said i'm gonna share my linkedin file with you where you can see me or you can invite me for the personal interview he called me and requested specifically photo and funny thing that he couldn't explain why he needs my photo he, he's just like you know you know like like what i'm trying to say from this example is that um in this country it is crucial for majority of positions of course i'm not going to generalize and say about all the positions which is canada on the other hand they strictly ask you do not include any photo on cv do not include um, a religion or material status also shouldn't be excluded in CV. And coming from that point of the CV, for the time being, you can remove the phone number and the location. Include that a little bit later, let's say two, three months before your departure. For now, just leave your CV without the phone number or location. Why? I'm gonna explain you a bit later. Bear your CV and as per Canadian standards, it's better if you also prepare a cover letter right coming back from this bullet we need to make sure that while you're in the country of your residence at the moment gather all the references references apparently in canada are very important i can say that reference from other country important in canada probably the reference what by the meaning of references they mean the reference from inside of Canada. However, we don't have the privilege, right? We are abroad. From now on, just gather all the references you have from all the works you did. Have them printed on the letterhead of the company, make sure that let, uh, they are stamped and they are signed by your line manager. Of course, a part of the references, make sure that all your diplomas are with you all translated um of course you're gonna translate it in any case by preparing for the uh, program itself however maybe you have or you see if I received additional diploma or certification just make sure that all these papers letters diplomas are in one file just better scan them as well so to have a soft copy with and keep them with you when you will go to Canada. Another bullet I would like to mention in this video is networking. Networking is very, very important. And to be honest, I was very skeptical about this bullet, but my husband convinced me <laughs> that actually it's very important. First obvious way is LinkedIn, of course. What we did, what actually I did, I started to slowly contact uh, recruiters in Canada. But not of the way of, you know, hi, my name is Valeria, I'm coming to Canada, just help me with the job. No, not like that. What I started to do, I started to build up my networking from the people of my industry in Canada by creating a just generalized message explaining who I am, where I'm coming from, and it will be good for me to expand my networking at the moment in case of any future opportunities or joint venture. You can browse some templates which is used to your situation, but what I did is I just scrap up this note, I save it, and first I started to contact the recruiters without attaching my CV, then request you receive two which will be accepted, which is fine. What I strongly advise you, do not bombard these people with your CVs and saying, okay, I'm coming and I want a job and how can you help me? When you set actually up your date of your departure, I will suggest you to start attach your CVs to that notes, you know, and connection requests or contact people who you already connected earlier. This time you also can change your CV and include that there your address and just uh, the phone number which will be available at the, at the moment, you know, or just without the phone number, it's also fine, but you can mention the address, which is, for example, in my case, will be New Brunswick. And you can start actively applying for the jobs 
number one. Number two, you can start to connect the people you already connected before and say them, hi, do you remember me? So now we have a set date and I would love to share my CV with you. And this is my experience. If you don't mind, can you have uh, a look at my profile or at my resume? Well, a part of the LinkedIn, we also have other social media platforms, but that platforms, uh, I would say, will go more in terms of connection with the people and getting to know them and getting to know the place. For example, uh, the social media platform like Facebook is a great um, platform just to meet people and start a discussion or the conversation with them. You can find uh, different groups over there, for example, Russians in Canada or Russians in New Brunswick and you start the conversation and then asking about guys what is the job opportunities in certain town or where is better to go if i am blah 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 or probably you will just share some thoughts with them and the conversation starts and that person knows another person you know it's just a basic conversation and it's a basic network how one person knows another person and this is how the word will spread i would like to put it in the nutshell to say that networking i think is the main bullet uh, of everything. It's extremely important to socialize, to speak with people. I need to remind myself that more often as well. To find the connections, no matter where you are, just try to communicate as much as you can, ask questions, just speak, but don't ask. Uh -huh. What I'm trying to say, don't bombard people. You can you help me? Can you do? Can you? Can you? Nobody owns you anything, first of all. So you, what you need to do is just, you need to communicate. And I think I will come to my uh, last bullet right here. Okay. Well, I'm coming to the last bullet. I think it's like it's a simple bullet, and I think uh, we may, we might forget about it uh, most of the time. Is the practicing yourself uh, in front of the mirror? How you're gonna go for the interview? How you represent yourself? In addition to that, just contact the uh, recruiting agencies, which is also important. And I forgot to mention that earlier when I talk about the recruiters. You can contact the agency. Contact the recruiters, uh, practice in front of the mirror, how you're gonna go uh, for the interview, watch YouTube videos, there's so many videos about how to find a job in Canada, how to interview the, yourself, what you have to do, so on and so forth. Let's sum up what everything I said today. First of all is plan your location. Yeah, Planning your location by researching the market, checking the job analytics, um, having a look of the cost of living, of the pace you're looking for, um, about the duration from work to home. Second thing is Canadianize your resume to make sure that your resume up to the Canadian standards. The number three is gather the all references and diplomas uh, with you. Make sure that they are translated to English. Contact recruiting agencies. Uh, make sure that you reach them out, do the networking, uh, networking is important, it can be done on the social media platforms, it can be by attending the virtual events as well, or the events in your country where you can meet uh, international people and communicate with them. And number six is the research and understand the marking where you're going to. I hope it was useful tips for you. I'm going to implement uh, these techniques and these tips in our case. I don't know if it will help. I hope it will. Generally, I think it is something we have to keep in mind. And I wish you good luck with your Canada journey. And I wish you good luck in terms of finding a job in the place you're going to. It was Bal with you. And it was Dex with you today as well. Just remember one thing. Job is the key which leads to many other things. And good luck. Bye.